from the 915 to H-Town, from the Panhandle Plains to the Valley, and everywhere in between. This is the 5050 Podcast, powered by College Promoters USA. Join me, Hector Cano, as we cover the Texas high school club and college soccer landscape, along with an inside look at the college soccer recruiting scene. The 5050 Podcast is a platform about the people and for the people who are dedicated to the beautiful game. College Promoters USA, founded and located in San Antonio, operates as the only family-owned college recruiting company in Texas that brings a truly professional, local, and face-to-face approach to area high school student-athletes and their families. If your son or daughter is serious about college athletics, call them at 210-494-6363 or visit collegepromotersusa.com anytime. College Promoters USA, the best investment a parent can make in their high school student athletes. Here we go. It's another edition of the 5050 podcast powered by our proud partners, College Promoters USA. College Promoters USA, they are America, America's premier college prep program and high school student athlete marketing service since 1997. Located locally here in San Antonio, Texas, you can find them in the Ventura Plaza Shopping Center. You can also find them on social on Twitter at SATX Recruiting, as well as on Instagram at College Promoters USA. And you can also get more information on what they're about and the cool things they're doing on their website at collegepromotersusa.com. My next guests, they are here to help us kick off the very beginning of the Tasco Convention Series. Very excited to have them on. They're going to tell us about a lot of the awesome stuff that uh, their organizations are bringing to the game. And uh, we'll also talk about the Tasco convention itself, uh, which will be less than a month away now. Uh, we are joined by both John O'Callaghan, the Strategic Partnerships Manager for VO, the VO Camera Systems, and Jack Stewart, the Sales Director for Beyond Pulse. Gentlemen, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Pleasure to be here. Doing good. Thanks for having us, Hector. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the place to be from what I hear, rather than maybe watching, uh, what is that, Tampa Bay and uh, Baltimore, as we were uh, just enlightened, <laughs> right? So awesome. So uh, so first of all, again, gentlemen, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. And we're very excited to have you all here and listen more or find out more of what maybe people sometimes tend to think they might know about your products or they're familiar with it. They've heard a little bit about it, but they don't really know. They're not quite very familiar with it whatsoever, maybe. Um, so very briefly, uh, maybe we'll start with, uh, with Jono. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your products and maybe some of those things that people may not necessarily know. Yeah. So uh, VO has been around now for about six uh, years. It's a fully automated soccer camera. So you set up on the side of the field, you press play on the VO app and it'll film your game automatically. So no need for anybody to be standing by the camera, manning that and and filming the game. Uh, Afterwards, you can also go and edit it, make clips, make highlights. Coaches give coaching points within our software platform as well. And then also our newest uh, edition of the VO2 camera, uh, has the ability to live stream as well, which is a huge, huge uh, ask of coaches and has been for the last few years. And so we're excited to to bring that to the table. And so uh, the live stream is is really easy as well. It's all done through through our VO Live app. And so now uh, you can watch the game from no matter uh, no where uh, you are, uh, and you can also stream it to to your smart TV as well. So um, yeah, that is uh, VO Camera in a nutshell, and uh, we're excited to to continue making advancements here. Uh, soon with their with their analytics platform as well awesome great stuff thank you jano and uh jack how about yourself tell us a little bit in terms of um beyond pulse it's it seems to be my general interaction has been for whatever reason with people with uh soccer people they know or they've heard because it's a camera system maybe i've heard a little bit more about vo uh but beyond pulse obviously there's a gigantic market there but you all seem to be uh at the very front of that tell us a little bit about beyond pulse yeah i mean i think you hit the nail on the head hector i mean people are really familiar with the you know amazing systems and 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 the importance of videoing uh games but you know as a former professional athlete and and starting to really build that ecosystem within a club or 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 school uh what beyond pulse has done is is give a wearable technology that will allow players to engage and respond to, to training and game data 
So as they're going through their youth sports career, uh, they can start learning about overtraining, undertraining, uh, the importance of recovery uh, during, you know, whether they're, you know, it's recovering from an injury, um, talking about injury prevention. So back to that overtraining, undertraining, uh, and then starting to really, starting to really think about how college coaches are starting to utilize this in their programs with a wearable device. Um, and so now they're starting to look in the recruiting process, you know, on top of video, they're really starting to look at, you know, how do these athletes that we're recruiting, how do they train, right? What do they do in a practice? Uh, you know, are they covering the distance that I want my number six to cover? You know, is that mm-hmm. outside back doing the responsible thing? So it's really just improving and giving more of a professional level experience all the way down the, the youth uh, soccer landscape and, and into other sports as well. So that's that's interesting, Jack. So you hit on something. Is that a growing trend in terms of what you're hearing from, let's say, particularly college coaches as far as additional data that is now officially being requested to accompany video? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's one yeah. of the things, uh, even from a global standpoint, where where coaches are right. asking, you know, because they're not able to essentially fly across. We're not omnipotent as college coaches in the recruiting process. So they're they're starting to rely on some of the you know uh, above and beyond video. Uh, what are the tangible things that they can see and get objective data to really start understanding what that player is that they're recruiting? Gotcha. Yeah. Now, have you found in that time? Have you found do coaching staffs maybe, however they may receive that data, do do they still need? maybe a little bit of help here and there as far as interpreting that data or do they, or is it pretty cut dry to the point or? (laughs) Yeah, I still think uh, the learning is still in its infancy. uh, And that's why I think beyond pulse has been such a great product for, for the youth sports space because it's very easy, digestible data. Uh, We still do a lot of uh, uh, analysis for the club or high school coach. So, you know, making sure you're understanding what that data is telling you. Um, and really providing you with all the information that you need uh, for uh, for um, you know for your game and for your training sessions. Great stuff, thank you. And so, question. And so, we we take it back. We throw it back over to you, Jono. What is maybe when you talk with uh, when you're talking about your product, right? You're talking about video camera. What is maybe the the biggest misconception that you find yourself? becoming a key talking point when talking with the uh, with people about it yeah great question um i would honestly say that video in the past has always been looked at as a thing that's you know that's nice to have the top teams do that the best teams do that but we've saw a gradual shift with video and some other technology as jack just alluded to where these things are becoming normal now it's almost becoming a a uh, thing that is a, a necessity as part of coaching and part of development. So uh, those coaches now, you see, if you go to fields, whether it's a club soccer tournament, high school soccer tournament, there's going to be cameras everywhere. Um, and we've just became accustomed to filming everything. And I think that is, is a good thing for, for development because as coaches, you can know what you're seeing on the field, but it really reaffirms what is going on when you go back and look at that video uh, and you're able to give a player a direct uh, visual coaching point uh, on what maybe they did well or maybe they didn't do so well. And so that would, I would say, is there's been a major shift uh, in the way that video is just perceived uh, in general within the soccer community. And how about yourself, Jack? Same thing. What's maybe key talk, key talking point in terms of common misconception when talking about your product with, with people? Yeah, I mean, I think Jono hit it on uh, nail on the head. It's, it's, uh, you know, is it a nice to have or is it really, you know, uh, something of, of value? And I think, you know, the more we get into the sports science and the data uh, and we start talking about, you know, whether it's with the ECNL or, you know, kids trying to play at a high level, we need to be able to, to see that objective data to see, you know, are we are we pushing them too far? You know, a lot of the athletes that that I know uh, in the Texas area are probably multi-sport athletes and making sure that, you know, if we're training them, you know, 365, we need to make sure that we're we're also giving them time to recover as well and, and being able to see that because uh, we only get, you know, as coaches, we probably only get, you know, six hours of them a week before the games on the weekends. So being able to see that data throughout the course of a week is really important. 
Yeah, well said. What is the impact? What would you what would you say is from your uh, respective products? What is maybe the the impact? The biggest impact. The if you had to identify the one single biggest impact that your product is having on the game or or where the game is trending, if if you will, what would you? Is there is there a specific thing that you could identify like the one big one? It's a good one. Uh, it'd be hard to nail down uh, just one thing, but if I had to pick one, I would say uh, the ability to be noticed. You know, now college coaches don't have to travel coast to coast internationally uh, if they have video at their fingertips. And so for us, we really pride ourselves on being able to give people that access, whether it be live through the live stream or the ability for coaches and players to send those, those game clips and those full game highlights afterwards. And so uh, that is really transcending the recruiting process now because college coaches can't be in three, four different places at a time. We, we, we know how many showcases and tournaments and events go on. And so, Having this uh, this tool is is really uh, a, a big big priority for them as well. So good stuff, Jack. Yeah, and I'd say uh, for for Beyond Pulse, it's really about development. Whether that's coaching, whether that's player development, um, and it's really just being able to understand when we can perform. And you know, we we train all week for the games on the weekends. Uh, and being able from a coach to understand what, you know, how do I put the best team, the the right 11 on the field? You know, how do I put the, you know, and as a player, am I doing enough to, to get myself into the starting lineup? Am I taking care of myself and thinking about recovery? Uh, I think is really, you know, the, the main talking point would be, you know, development uh, for both coaches and players. Gotcha. Where would you all say you're seeing maybe, um, I know it's a little bit of a loaded question, but maybe the biggest, as it relates to your product, the biggest growth or demand in terms of your product? Is there a particular level, part of the market? Where, where are you seeing that biggest growth, that biggest demand? I'd say for, for us, as I just mentioned previously, the live streaming was was a huge demand. And I think that was a big thing over the last couple of years when uh, COVID and all this stuff, you know, live streaming was the sexy thing to do because everyone couldn't be there. So now it's just became, uh, like I said, it's a norm uh, to be able to do that. And so that was a big, big uh, ask for a lot of coaches. We're now also seeing coaches want more and more analytics, uh, which I'm sure Jack can even jump into with how much uh, they can provide as well. But uh, that's something that view, you know, we do provide some analytics along with the video as well. And it's an area where we, we really see ourselves growing as well, just because coaches want the information at their fingertips. Yeah. It kind of seems in my, my many talks with, with college coaches, club coaches, and a lot of club, uh, you know, club players that the real, I guess, evolvement, evolution, whatever we want to call it, evolution, I guess, of the demand really kind of stemmed from, uh, from from COVID, right? From the pandemic that really in terms of dead periods for college coaches as well, that just took things to another level in terms of for for, for club players to be able to be noticed, right? So um, so yeah, it, that was it was interesting how uh, how people adapted to that uh, for sure. So Jack, how about yourself? Uh, what was the question again? I want to make sure I'm answering it right. Yeah. Where are you, as it relates to your product, in terms of, in obviously, in terms of the game, right? Whether it be level, um, level market, what have you, where are you seeing the biggest growth or the biggest demand as it relates to your product? Yeah, I think it's really from, I think there's two different, the, the club and the, the, the club space and then the high school and, and college space are, are two different uh, markets. We're getting a lot of uh, attrition and a lot, sorry, not attrition, a lot of traction with uh, the high schools and, and colleges because they are starting to look at this data because they want to make sure their programs are top notch. But I think the the breakthrough is really with the the club space and being you know that value add and you're you know you you just mentioned it with COVID and you know if you don't have video players are starting to ask for this this information they want to go to. Uh, schools, programs, clubs, uh, where they're offering these uh, these added value items to to their development as youth athletes. Because 
they're all trying to go somewhere, whether that's play, you know, you know, whether it's, you know, go from a second team to a first team, first team to an academy, academy into college. It's, it's really, you know, how is that program going to give me the tools so that I can, you know, put my best foot forward in that recruiting professional uh, aspect process. Yeah. And you mentioned Jack, you mentioned the club game, right? The club level, whether it be club or maybe high school, because we obviously we cover high school and college more clubs, a little harder to get your arms around in terms of coverage, but any uh, for both of you, are there any, maybe any recent success stories that kind of come to mind in terms of uh, where your, you know, testimony that you received from whether it be parents, players, coaching staffs, um, success stories with uh, where it was kind of a game changer for for certain programs or anything. Any recent success stories? Yeah, uh, from from a Beyond Pulse point of view, uh, the 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 quick and easiest one, and it's really you know palatable because I just had a conversation about it uh, earlier today. Was you know being schools now recognizing and, and reducing down the soft tissue injuries because of overtraining and undertraining. So being able to have that objective data during the course of the season. So for example, like I know I ran you know, 12,000 meters uh, in a game on Saturday, you play again on Wednesday, you know, I need to make sure that I'm training properly and not overworking or underworking, uh, you know, myself. So, you know, seeing a program really do that. Uh, and it actually led them to get to the finals. They ended up losing in the finals, but, uh, you know, they were able to take, you know, from the first year of, you know, the, the prior year before having beyond pulse, uh, they, they had a ton of soft tissue injuries during the course of the season due mm-hmm. to overtraining. And now they were able to actually scale that back and look at it where they, you know, they were excited that they had zero, uh, soft tissue injuries during the course of the season. And do you find, is that a growing, is that more and more growing feedback that you're receiving from other, other you know, other, other clients? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's the one testimonial that I like, uh, because, yeah. you know, it's, it's that <laughs> overtraining, undertraining right. value. And, and, and like, I'm, I'm here uh, in California, about to go coach and my kids are not in the high school season yet, but they're going, you know, high school trainings. So being yeah. able to track that and know now for my session tonight, you know, half the kids may need to do a little bit more fitness. Half the kids don't, uh, you know, just making sure they're ready for the game that we have on Sunday. So it's, uh, you know, the stories I hear about that is pretty much, you know, the, the main driving point right now. And Jono, same, any significant or recent success story regarding your product as far as a kind of a, maybe a, maybe a small testimonial. Yeah, actually, we um, we recently produced a video and some content around this. Uh, it was a really cool story. There was two girls that played for a Southampton club affiliate in Baltimore, and they were playing in a tournament uh, which was being filmed by by a bunch of different cameras, via view uh, being one of those. And they were actually noticed by some of the academy coaches at Southampton on the professional women's side in England. And they were they were picked and received to to go over there and uh, and have a trial with the Southampton women's team. So we actually followed them uh, to create this really cool story of how they were noticed, you know, being videoed by a video camera, and the coaches were really interested right. in seeing more and seeing them in person. So we videoed them going all the way from Baltimore over to Southampton, England. They were able to train with the academy for a week, um, and then and then get their hands on on some of the best training and coaches uh, in the world. And so. That was just a really cool, cool story and testament to uh, if they didn't have that video, then would they have been noticed? Yeah. Uh, would they have been able to be have those opportunities? So I thought that was really cool. Really cool. That's great stuff. Great stuff. I mean, we might have to follow up with you on that one. So great stuff. Yeah, I can uh, post uh, a little link to the, the video as well. It's on YouTube. So it's really cool. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so now we, we kind of shift gears here a little bit. We talk about the upcoming Tasco. Uh, Tesco High School Coaches Convention, which will be next month, uh, November 17th through the 19th uh, in uh, Galveston, Texas. What will either yourselves or your organizations, because I know your organizations will be there, but what will you all be doing there and what um, where can we find you there in, in the convention? Any Any information that you can share on that? Yeah, I think uh, we'll both have uh, booth setups in the in the exhibit hall area, um, so you'll be able to find us there as well. Um, 
I will give a little teaser that uh, we're going to be doing a, a joint Beyond Pulse VO camera giveaway. Um, so nice. coaches will be able to sign up for, for that and we'll, we'll do it as a raffle uh, to where we'll, uh, the coach that wins will get a free VO camera and a set of Beyond Pulse uh, training belts. And so that's really exciting. It's probably going to be, I would I would estimate about four or $5,000 worth of technology um, that wow. we're giving away. And so, yeah, that's really exciting. I'll let Jack talk. I know they, they have some sessions and stuff planned as well. So. Now, is the requirement to, to be eligible for that? Is the requirement is you have to listen to every every previous episode of the Fifty Fifty podcast? Or what is you got to help me out here? What are, what are the that is? Yeah, they need to come at least with a few a uh, few facts about every every episode, and then to at least be eligible. There we go. There we go. We'll we'll help you out with that. We'll, we'd love to help. So, Jack, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I Johnny, you'll probably know more about what we're doing that. Uh, at, uh, at Tasco, but I know we're going to have the giveaway. We have a few field sessions where you'll be able to see uh, the data in real time because uh, the beauty of Beyond Pulse is uh, you're, you know, it's all Bluetooth. You can sync up the information so that the, the kids that are on the field doing the session right afterwards, you'll be able to see the data. Um, so it's just that real live interaction of, of data that you'll be able to see. And then there's a, a couple of new releases that we have. We have an individual game report that's coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, so anytime uh, in the back end, if you flip it from a training to a game, it'll create a report. So it'll take out all that dead, you know, the dead time essentially that you're having, you know, uh, the team's getting water or they're standing, uh, all that stuff. So you'll get a really cool game report. Uh, and then the other thing, I don't know if it's, it's, it's going to be there, but we do have a, a personal player profile passport, we'll call it. Um, that's coming out that we can showcase uh, at Tasco as well. And your thoughts on, you know, your relationships maybe with, uh, with Tasco and your thoughts on, on Tasco and attending the convention, um, how far back does that go or, um, what can you share on that? I guess. I think for, for Vio, this is now our second time we'll be in attendance at Tasco convention. Um, I wasn't there myself last year, but I, I got some great feedback from some of my colleagues that it was a great event, and, and I'm really excited for it this year. Uh, we've had a great relationship with Tasco for the last uh, two years, and, and working with Jimmy and, and his team and stuff, they've, they've been awesome. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to the event. It looks like we have some great guest speakers that are going to be there as well, so it uh, should be a fun time. Jack? Yeah, and just to echo John, I mean, we're really excited about it. We had some great success, uh, I think, last year when we went. But uh, just in the state of Texas as a whole, we've had a you know a tremendous uptick in, in interest with Beyond Pulse and and high schools, colleges, and, and clubs getting in on board, coming on board for uh, you know subscriptions of the Beyond Pulse belt. So we're really looking forward to it. And uh, unfortunately, I won't be there. We'll have uh, our, our co-founder Michael Sup uh, will be there with Jono. Uh, but uh, we're really looking forward to to get head into Galveston. Yeah, yeah, awesome. He is. Uh, they are John O'Callaghan, the strategic partnerships manager of Vo Vo Camera Systems, and Jack Stewart, sales director of Beyond Pulse. Now, before we transition, gentlemen, uh, to our next segment or get ready to transition, um, kind of an open ended one here, a pretty broad one. But what maybe? in terms of what's on the horizon, in terms of what you can share, what has you most excited about the future of both VO and Beyond Pulse? Yeah, there's there's a lot of things that excite me. Uh, some that I can share, some that I, that I can't, but um, just, the, just the new release of our camera, the, the live streaming feature is literally only a few months old. And so we're already seeing people in hundreds of countries across the world streaming games. I'm, I'm talking... Africa, uh, Asia, Europe, uh, America, and it's, it's, it's awesome to see that because our mission as a company is, is to democratize uh, sports for all and, and really go above and beyond to make that happen because now we are uh, taking this to, to a global standpoint. And we try and keep it at kind of a price point where it, it is affordable for people to use as well. And so that excites me that the fact that we get this uh, camera verse and this product verse is going to be uh, all over the globe. Um, nice. But then, yeah, in, in the short term, we do have some some products that are going to be getting released over the next course of three to six months. So uh, stay tuned for those. And, and I think a lot of coaches are going to be really excited about what's coming. Yeah. And I mean, for from Beyond Pulse, I think it's it's uh, 
really diving into the data and allowing coaches the ability to speak to somebody or get automated reports about what that data means. Um, again, to Jono's point, there's lots of things that are coming in the future for Beyond Pulse that we, you know, we're, we're, we're not able to talk about today, but it's all around eventually essentially being the Fitbit, the, 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 wear, the number one wearable device for youth athletes uh, in the country and around the world. Um, because, you know, we want to make sure people are moving. We want to make sure our athletes are, are being active and uh, really combating one of the biggest challenges that we have as a soccer nation is that, uh, you know, that, that attrition of athletes that we have at that U13 level. So how can we focus on some of the grassroots uh, initiatives to focus on, right. Um, right. you know, movement and keeping them, you know, excited in, in sport? Yeah. Awesome. Great stuff. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we appreciate you all uh, again being here. Don't go anywhere. Obviously, we know you're going to stick around with us for our second segment. We get to have some fun in our counter tag segment, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. College Promoters USA, founded and located in San Antonio, operates as the only family-owned college recruiting company in Texas that brings a truly professional, local, and face-to-face -face approach to area high school student-athletes and their families. As the lead sponsor and proud supporter of the 5050 Podcast, alongside Coach Hector Cano, College Promoters is proud to be elevating its support for the college soccer recruiting process more than any other service in the country. If your son or daughter is serious about competing in college soccer, call College Promoters USA directly at 210-494-6363 or visit collegepromotersusa.com anytime. College Promoters USA, the best investment a parent can make in their high school student athlete. And we're back with uh, both John O'Callaghan, the Strategic Partnerships Manager of VO, as well as Jack Stewart, the Sales Director for Beyond Pulse. All right, gentlemen, it is uh, time to uh, have some fun with our counterattack segment. But before we do that, let me tell you, uh, let me tell you all real quick about our great, great partners and our great friends at Gipper. So, Gipper is the way schools, athletic departments, ads, and coaches create world class marketing content. Join 2,500 coaches and ADs and use Gipper to create high quality visual branded graphics for your program. The best part, anyone can do it in seconds on any device without needing any design experience. Listeners, listeners of the 5050 podcast can receive 10% off any first time Gipper purchase. Just visit gipper.com partner slash partner slash 5050 to learn more. Again, that's gipper.com slash partner slash 5050. All right, gentlemen, it is that time. I know you all are a little nervous, but uh, we promise we'll uh, we'll have some fun with it. So, all right, uh, everything applies. So as we ask these questions, obviously these kind of go more, um, you all are kind of in between, obviously still coaches, as I understand it. Um, so uh, feel free to answer whether it's player-based, coach-based, whatever you want. So, all right, our first one, last song you downloaded. Frank Ocean, Swim Good. A throwback, David Getter memories. Listen to that the gym last night. <laughs> nice. You all, this that might be the fastest anyone's probably ever answered that one. It usually, for some reason, people take forever with that one. So Jack was waiting for that one. Oh yeah, I had it ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Favorite day of the week, and why? Probably Fridays, because uh, I know I'm typically going to go out for a nice dinner. There you go. For me, it's Saturdays. My day usually starts at like 6 a.m. either watching Celtic or Liverpool and then have the rest of the day whether I'm coaching, spend time with family. But yeah, love Saturdays. And there's always, especially this time of year, there's always sports on the TV, whether it be soccer, football, uh, you name it. It's, it's a good day of the week. So, Jono, you, uh, you a big uh, Liverpool supporter? Yes. Yeah, big time. I knew you were we a good man. I saw that look in your eye. I saw that look in your <laughs> yeah. eye. I knew you were a good man. So yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, we've had way too many, as I said in our last episode, we've had way too many uh, Manchester United fans. Yeah. I mean, there's United only United one way fans. to go. United uh, way. <laughs> you're out number. You're out number. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Next one. Uh, favorite childhood TV show? Oof. 
uh, it, you can go far uh, and back as you want in terms of that in terms of childhood. It's like a double trouble with uh, where the families compete against each other in like a slime. I can't. I think that's what the name of it is. Or double time. Double Dare oh, is what it is. Nickelodeon. Double oh, Double Dare. Dare. Nickelodeon. Yeah. Nickelodeon yeah, yeah, the, Double Dare. The I Don't Know Slime, right? Was it the I Don't yes. Know? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to yeah. go uh, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. That was uh, that was my jam when I was a kid. <laughs> All right. So we'll come back. So we went childhood. What about now? Current favorite TV show? I just got done last night watching Peaky Blinders. Phenomenal show on Netflix if you haven't watched yeah. it. Still have not seen that. Still have not seen Good that. one. Good yeah. one. Uh, I just finished watching uh, Only Murder, Only Murderers in the Building. Oh, uh, sounds awful. With Selena, is with Selena Gomez, uh, Steve oh. Martin, and uh, Martin Short. It's awesome. Hmm. I thought it was, I was like, is this a new Netflix one or something? Uh, okay. I think, gotcha. Hulu, I think right. Hulu, Hulu maybe. Hulu. Okay. Now Peaky Peaky Blinders, how many how many seasons is that? That's like what three or four in it? No, six. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Oh wow. Yeah, six wow. seasons. It's uh it was one of them. It took me like one or two times to, to get into it at first. Once I got into it, there was no going back. It's what a show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I gotta get started on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to. They're they're actually it's, uh they're not making any more seasons, but I, I have heard they've confirmed they're gonna make a movie uh in like twenty twenty four of it. So yeah, you have some time to get on board. They're going to go the uh, the Sopranos route, right? So yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Next one, uh, kind of a kind of a superpower here: the ability to speak every language or talk to animals. Oof. Speak every language. I'm, I'm just going to go opposite, just uh, <laughs> because, uh, just to be a contrarian. contrarian. Yeah, it would, exactly. would be quite. Quite interesting to, to know what my dogs are doing uh, day in, day out. I swear that there's not a lot of thoughts that go through their heads, so it'd be nice to know. <laughs> Which two? Yeah. <laughs> right. Favorite movie quote, like all-time favorite movie quote that you can share, obviously, that you can share. Uh, it's a Step Brothers. Uh, uh, you're probably wondering why I gathered you here today uh, as they were sitting at a family dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you could pull a ton from that one, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, stick with my roots. I'm uh, I'm from Scotland, and and Braveheart is just gets to my soul. Uh, so the Willie Wallace speech, you can you can take our lives, but you'll never take our freedom. Oh, I think yeah, uh, I think we live like that every day in Scotland, uh, pretty much. So yeah, that is uh, <laughs> that's one I'll never forget. All right, good one, good good. Okay, so next one, you all, uh, both of you, well each of you respectively, right? You all are appointed to the new position of soccer czar in America. You are in charge of all soccer. What you say goes agenda item number one. What is the first change you are making in this country as it relates to the sport of football, soccer? It's hard to, it's hard to tell you one because there's probably like a hundred, <laughs> but I'm going to yeah. uh, break it down to promotion and relegation within leagues. Uh, I think it's it's crazy that we still don't have that here in the U.S. because you look at every other country in the world where, where soccer's uh, really a dominant force. There's promotion and relegation, and, and it adds so much excitement and so much passion to, to the supporters and fan base. So I would add, yeah, promotion and relegation. Yeah, I would say from a youth level, uh, get rid of the pay-to-play model. Um is, is the one thing I would, uh, or reduce it drastically. Um, but yeah, I think that's, uh, mm -hmm. the one way to fix it. Uh, yeah. I do like promotion relegation though, John, it's a good one. Yeah. You know, the promotion relegation one that was actually in the news earlier, or I think, I guess, was it last week, maybe earlier this week or going back to last week talking about, uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but the commissioner of the NBA talking about trying to find a way how they could, how they could implement that to avoid teams from like seriously tanking. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know how they would get that off the ground, uh, but that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, but, and then now the pay to play one is an interesting one, Jack, that you mentioned, because one of the thoughts is how come maybe you haven't seen, how come we haven't seen in this country 
more of an active, more aggressive role in terms of sponsorships to help alleviate that, to kind of make that a, at least a little bit more of a reality in certain markets? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's, uh, I think it's capitalism at its finest, uh, you know, youth soccer clubs and organizations are, are, you know, we see it on a day to day. They're, they're, they're money-making machines, um, or money generating machines. I know they give back and there's all the costs associated with it, but you know, there, there's gotta be some give and take, uh, with the whole entire system and model. I don't know what it could be. I mean, I think there could be some commercial dollars and funding, but like, what is that number? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the, the, the it's, it's capitalism. Everybody, you know, if you went, rent a field, it's a hundred bucks. If you do this, it's that. Right. So it's, you know, how do you make it, uh, affordable unnecessarily, you know, uh, as, ex as, as expensive as it currently currently is in some areas. Right. Right. All right, next one. Name a phobia of yours. A legit, like maybe phobia that you know you have. I don't know how to. I was talking about this yesterday, and it's really funny. But I buy, or I'll go buy a gift. Let's just say it's a, a nice smelling cologne or a candle, and it's new in a box, and I have. I just won't open it or use it, even though it's already paid for. I don't know if it's like a hoarding thing or I don't know mm -hmm. what you'd call that as a phobia, but it's just like a, I just want to keep it pristine, but it's just like, I'm going to no, use that's, it. It's just, that's not a, now have you had, is, have you had that for a while or is that more of a post pandemic behavior pattern or have you I think it? it's, it's been, I mean, even while I was playing, when I'd get new cleats from Adidas, it'd be like, I, oh, okay. I didn't want to wear them until I had to. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think for me, uh, it would be when people, uh, you go to the bathroom and you leave the toilet roll facing the wrong way. You know, it should be like going clockwise and people put it backwards. Yeah. And so yeah. I'll even go as far as in other people's houses. If it's the wrong way, I'll turn it around so it's facing the right way. <laughs> uh, very small, small thing, but it's super yeah. annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Does that qualify as a phobia, or is that just more of a? Is that a maybe an OCD thing? Maybe. Yeah, it could be that too. Yeah. 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 No, but I'm with you. I'm with you. I heard. Uh, you know, I'm, so I'm retired Air Force. I used to have uh, one of my former chiefs. Expl he broke that down the best. He said that it should. He said it should be. I can't believe we're talking about toilet paper, but it is what it is. Um, that it's. What did he say? It should be bangs, right, coming in front. Yeah. Not not a not a mullet. I think exactly. that's how we describe. It. <laughs> that's great, how we describe. That's it. a great one. I'm going to use that. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, every time I hear that, that's what immediately comes to mind. Yeah. So, all right. Next one. Speaking of pandemic, uh, what is a hobby that you discovered uh, during the pandemic? Yeah, my, mine. Mine's right around the corner from you, Hector, uh, in good old San Antonio, and it's uh, I started purchasing classic vehicles and restoring them. Or oh, nice. having uh, my, my girlfriend's dad do a lot of the restoration because I'm in that when it comes to that. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're they're international scouts. So I have uh, five oh, of them. Yeah. Now. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. So all, I love all, those. All of the two sixty two sixty twos that are like a four speed that the front window goes down, yeah. and then I have uh, three seventy. 275s and a 73 um, wow. that we've all just done work on and worked on. So it's been a a, a, a crazy money pit of a, a project, but it's a, yeah. a fun a fun hobby. That is awesome. Yeah, I love those. I know. Yeah, I love those. Those are great. So yeah, I'm a big uh, off road and I'm a big Jeep guy as well. So yeah, I mean, I that's kind of in my wheelhouse. Yeah, that's do awesome. you do you do the the Jeep wave to other Jeep? driver sector well currently i'm I'm not in a jeep right oh. now so uh but yeah that's kind of one of those things that it's it's part of the it's, it's a jeep thing as they say well, right? do you know the jeep the jeep wave jano i have a jeep i've had like four jeeps so yeah yeah i know what I, I'm <laughs> there, you you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go how about yourself jano hobby you discovered during the pandemic i don't know if you'd say discovered it but definitely accelerated it uh 
growing up, I played golf a lot, and then it got hard to play golf uh, a lot when you have kids and family and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. But during COVID, there was very limited things you can do, and golf was one of those. And so I think I found myself playing at least twice a week. Uh, you would think it would help my handicap. It maybe took one shot off my, my score. But, um, yeah, definitely became a, a – golf is now my preferred hobby. I'd even put it above playing football, which I never thought I would say. So There you go. Interesting. Wow. All right. A couple more. We're almost done here. So who would play you in a movie? <sighs> Doing a that's movie a good, of your life. Uh, that's a good one. I don't have any idea right now, but let's go Scott Con. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Just because I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna go with The Rock. I mean, he's just he's cool. Everybody loves The Rock. He's the man. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of seems to be the he, go-to right now. Yeah, yeah. He's funny and he's just a tank, and yeah, he's just great. Yeah, Scott Con, that one kind of that was from the depths, right? Scott Con, yeah. all right, hadn't heard that one in a while. So, all right, final one. We'll go ahead and wrap up here. So, been asking this one as of late as, to everybody. So, being completely objective here, scale of one to ten, a one you are god awful, and a ten you are the standard, right? The gold standard. How good? Or bad of a driver are you? Ooh, I'd go a nine, a nine point five. <laughs> I'd go a nine. It would be a ten, but I tend to get distracted a bit. My wife would tell you I'm like a four, but I, I'm giving myself <laughs> a nine. That's what I was gonna say. You gotta have witnesses. What would witnesses say? Oh right? yeah, my so, wife would say like a four or five. You drive too fast. <laughs> you. The Tesla does my driving for me these days, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, That's why I get a nine point five. <laughs> All right. That's my awesome. rating score. That's 11 large. Me anyway. 11 <laughs> large in California. <laughs> Cash awesome. is too expensive here, man. It's like almost eight bucks. Oh, it's going back down. Is it, but we're, uh, is it, oh, that, that's considered going back down to eight bucks? Uh, no, crazy. it's going back down. It's like at six ish now in LA. But wow. uh, it was that's... at eight, I mean, probably about a month ago, which was insane. Yeah. Well, well, hang in there. Awesome. So, uh, gentlemen, this has been awesome. We've uh, really appreciated you coming on, joining us, telling us about your products, anything. Um, so really quick, we'll kind of touch base before we kind of go to final thoughts, any plugs, anything, whether it's regarding the Tesco convention, anything as far as information, where can we get more info for those that might be listening to this later on strictly on the audio podcast, uh, where can we get more information or any plugs that you can share regarding both uh, VO and beyond pulse? Yeah, like Jono mentioned, I know uh, at the Tasco event, we'll, we'll be sending out an email here in the next, uh, I think, probably a couple of days for the the giveaway of the, the VO camera and the beyond, set of Beyond Pulse belts for your team. Um, nice. But yeah, if you want more information about Beyond Pulse, it's just uh, www.beyondpulse.com. Uh, or you can reach out to me di directly, and it's just jack.stewart uh, at beyondpulse.com. And we'd love to 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 connect and, and, and see how we can uh, you know help your program or your club. Yeah, I think uh, anyone that's attending Tasco, make sure you stop by the the VO booth. We're gonna not only have the giveaway that, that we mentioned earlier with Beyond Pulse, but we're gonna have a special uh, promotion for any coaches that are in attendance at Tasco. So stop by and learn more about that. I believe we're booth three hundred five, right in the middle of the exhibit hall. Um, and then also anyone else that's interested in uh, learning more about VO, head to our website, voveo.co. Uh, we have a partnership with Tasco, and so uh, any coaches there can get 20% off a of VO camera as well. Uh, that's on our website. And so um, also, yeah, my email, jono at veo.co. So if anyone has any questions or would like to chat, we'd, we'd love to hear and uh, connect with you. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure if you all had booth numbers already. That's why I wasn't sure. Yeah, so gotcha. Yep, 305 and uh, Beyond Pulse, Jack, I could probably tell you yours right here. I, I couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> Beyond Pulse will be at booth, um, let's see, 405. So 305 and 405. 
305-405. Gotcha. Awesome. So again, uh, coaches attending the Tasco High School Coaches Convention next month in Galveston. You can find VO, uh, VO Camera Systems in booth 305 and Beyond Pulse in that was 405, right? So yep. uh, booth 405. Great. So um, I know I'm still ta- I'm still talking with uh, Jimmy Kruger as far as I know. He's kind of laid out for me a little bit as to where I'll be, but hopefully get the opportunity to uh, to speak with you, Jono, and uh, touch base there. So looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Um, so before we go, as is customary, we kind of like to say kind of share thoughts. doesn't have to be related necessarily to this the game of soccer, things that are going on, current events in the game. Um, whatever kind of whatever's fresh on your mind, uh, any plugs or you already did plugs, but any thank yous, anything, any shout outs. Um, uh, uh, that's one of the things that we like to wrap up with, but bef- and you all as our guests, we kind of like to, uh, give the floor to you all. Shout out you first. Yeah, I think I'm just excited. Uh, 24 days away from, uh, the world cup, which, Anyone that is interested in football is probably a fanatic around that. I think it's going to be really different that we have World Cup games going on from Thanksgiving up until leading up to Christmas. And so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see to see how that is. And I think for the US, it kind of works in our time zone as well, uh, which is great. So, yeah, excited for the World Cup. A um, few weeks away, can't wait. Yeah, and just uh, from me, I mean, I want to thank, you know, Jono and all the great stuff that, you know, we're doing together with Vio and, and Hector. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and speak to uh, the great coaches in the great state of Texas. Um, look forward to getting out there, even though I won't be in uh, in in Galveston for for Tasco. Um, you know, I, I, I'm I'm out there all the time. So look forward to meeting everybody listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excited for excited for Tasco. Thanks for having us on, Hector, and thanks to uh, Jimmy. I think for for organizing this all for us through Tasco. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a shout out and a thank you to, obviously a thank you to both of you. Uh, thank you to, I know Michael, uh, who was originally supposed to be here, uh, but glad that we got Jack as well. We were blessed to have him, Jimmy, for putting this together as well. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the kind words as well, gentlemen. And, uh, you know, my, uh, my final thoughts, they're not, it's not really related to anything here. It's more so kind of a little bit on the personal side, but just with, uh, just a shout out, a, a big thank you to, my wife and my family um as you know i started i'm officially in season here since i coach on the private on the private school side here in uh, here in texas so uh you know and our season starts in about 10 less than about 10 days now is our first first match of the season and couple that with you know being an educator and running you know running the show for the podcast it's a lot of a lot a lot that she does and uh, couldn't do it without her so grateful for that grateful for our podcast team as well our supporters our title sponsors in uh the, in uh cause promoters usa and then as well as our support and being able to be a part of the of the tasco convention the support that we're also receiving from tasco so thank you uh thank you to all our supporters and uh, last but not least most importantly is our listeners our supporters as you all know, you all are the reason why we do it. Somehow along the way, we've managed to stumble across being listened to uh, in the majority of the states in this country. But also what's really cool is 38, 38 different countries around the world. So that's uh, like I, I always say, I have no idea how that happened, but we're, <laughs> we're grateful that, that it's happened. So thank you again. And uh, like I said, you're the reason why we do it. So until the next time, keep downloading and keep listening. You've been listening to the 5050 podcast powered by College Promoters USA. Help us continue to grow by liking, rating, and subscribing on all major podcast platforms. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at 50 underscore 50 pod, on Instagram at 50 underscore 50 podcast, as well as on YouTube at the 50 underscore 50 podcast. Until the next time, keep downloading.